Welcome back to the podcast. I am your host, Mr. Made Over. And I am Mrs. Made Over. And tonight, today, whenever this drop, which is tomorrow, in a few, maybe a few hours. Get, are you together? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's going to be a special episode today. You will not be seeing these beautiful faces. Sorry. Sorry, but this episode of where is miss katie, katie jones, jones. is a powerful episode it of, is and i thought that it was such a powerful episode to the point where i wanted to share my platform to share this story mm-hmm. with y'all so for the next two thursdays oh, oh, i know i'm sorry we will be showing mm-hmm. this actual clip and audio to our podcast yes. listeners and i think it's something that is definitely needed um it is something that is missing in the world today and if you had a big mom <laughs> that's the thing that it reminded me of so if yeah. you grew up with the big mom around then this will definitely resonate with you yeah. um or if you grew up with just a hands on a, a muddy, yeah. <laughs> a big ma, a muddy, a granny, a granny, <laughs> um, this will definitely resonate with you. Yeah. Um, and so it is definitely something that was very powerful. And and listening to it, yeah. I even had moments of man, that's yeah. that's I had a grandma Rome. <laughs> Rosie May <laughs> and uh, that it just made me kind of reflect on a lot of stuff that she yeah. taught us um, when she was you know still with us so um, yeah it was I, good um, it was real good I had a granny so yeah she, I had you know, both but she, she did not yeah. play yeah I so had a <laughs> this right here I think she'll put people in a position to really think right um, um, be glue that is missing right that held their family together because i know after my granny passed it seemed like the family just crumbled mm-hmm. and fell apart and that's on both sides my mom and my dad's side but we just thought that this story was just so powerful yeah and uh, and that it was relatable to yeah. every age bracket um that it not just the the older or the mm-hmm. seasoned generations but also um the younger generations because i know like a lot of um kids that i teach that's the one thing that they talk about is um mimi papa they call theirs you know the, the mimi's mm-hmm. um, mama like you know depending on where you from yeah. <laughs> everybody had a out. different yeah everybody yeah. called you know it was different the mama's like that yeah that's all of that um the nanas mm. um so it, it just depends on where where you live and how you grew up it it's that it's still that same it's that same person we just call it something different yeah. based on where we're from and you know may maybe even based on just um our background so this is definitely something that yeah. will resonate with like i said the everybody yeah. like it, it it just hits home so, and it makes you think. Yeah, so um, take time to listen up, listen to this. Mm-hmm. Um, we, when we created this platform, it's for not just for us, but it's to show other talents and showcase right. and give people um, things that, you know, that we necessarily had to earn. But right. now we're trying to give back to other people, too. Um, but after this over... <laughs> We got some special treats. <laughs> Man, we got special guesses. Guesses. And we're not going to say what it is now, yeah, but we got I will guesses. tell you, look forward to this. And also, we still dropping food, food reviews. reviews. Yes. Um, we got some special coming from the food review side, too. Yeah. So um, just keep tuning in. Keep watching us. Yes. And like we always say around about this time... Keep God, God first, first and, and the rest, rest will, will be, be added. added. And absolutely enjoy this picture audio. Uh, where <laughs> is 
Miss Katie, Katie Jones. All right, we out. Hi, I'm Sandy Powell, and welcome to the Roundtable. Uh, this special edition that I have today kind of walks us down memory lane and brings us to today. Um, it gives us the impact of yesterday. It gives us the insight on the importance of yesterday. Uh, my topic show is, where is Katie Jones? And you're sitting there saying, um, who is Katie Jones? Well, I'm going to walk you down memory lane, Elaine, just a little bit with Katie Jones. Katie Jones was my grandmother. She's my father's mother. And uh, she is the person that I would call one of the most impactful people in my life. She gave me the majority of my foundation from the very beginning. And so her touch of my life is a fingerprint that can never be washed away. And so I'm just gonna kinda talk a little bit about it. I'm gonna jump a little bit a little here and a little there, but at the end of it all, I want you to all understand that Katie Jones lives. Even though she passed away uh, February 1974, she lives. She lives deep within her children and her grandchildren, and now her great-great-grandchildren. And it goes even further than that. But let me give you a little bit of history on this because I, I wrote some things down because it's, it's a long time ago for some of you and for myself. Um, because I was so young, some things are still rushing back in my memory um, as to how she was knitted into our family and her presence and what she brought to our family. Um, she came to our family in 1965. Uh, it was in June and uh, she came to live with our family. She was uh, not feeling well. She was uh, somewhat sick and so my father and my mother decided to you know, for her to come to New York. But little did we all understand and know that Katie Jones's mission wasn't necessarily to be given care to for her health's sake, but she was going to spin off and set into motion generations and generations of, of herself, of Katie Jones's. Um, she came with uh, the intent to uh, also help my mother, which was a young uh, bride. She was, my, I think my mom was like 16 with her first child. And uh, I think by the time my mother was 26 or 28 or something, she had all seven of her children. And so my mother was a young woman with, with seven kids, a husband, and, and Katie Jones came to the rescue. Katie Jones, uh, although it looked like she came to be helped, she came to help us and to be on mission. And uh, the thing that I think I remember mostly about Katie Jones is that she nurtured. She actually touched us emotionally, mentally and if we got in you know the wrong spot and and did the wrong thing she would physically put a hand on us too so she had no problem with her role in our life i know the thing that my grandmother probably uh contributed the most was stability and uh she gave the foundation the need for the house to be at peace and whatever it took for it to be that she set that in motion uh, my father, which is her, um, her baby son, um, he, you could tell that she 
<laughs> she ain't play. She was four foot eleven, <laughs> which is probably where I got my height from. She was four foot eleven, and she stood as an Amazon woman in stature of who she was. She had confidence as a woman who may have been uh, well versed or, or, or either um, uh, educated. Uh, with degrees, with a second grade education. She didn't require amens in order to move and make movement. She didn't require people to be okay with what she thought and what she felt. She seemed to stand on her own two feet without the need to be validated from someone and where that came from, I don't know, but I only can contribute it or maybe think that this is God's way in her. That was, this was her life that brought her to this place where she felt the confidence that she had. Um, I loved her from the onset and I'm going to give you a little memory of how we were my, like one of my first memories of her, uh, where we had interaction and it was because uh, back in the day, and y'all all know back in the day, smoking was was common. Everybody and their brother smoked. Uh, and, of course, my grandmother was one of those as well. She smoked, my father smoked, and at the time my mother was a smoker. And so uh, back in the day, I was born in 1963. So y'all know, back in the day, children, y'all, y'all can laugh at this, but children were the gophers. And I'm let my face stay right here for a minute because y'all all know what that means. That means we turned the TV, we took the glass to the sink, we took their plate to the sink, we we brought their shoes if they needed the paper, if they wanted that mac. Yeah, we were the gophers. Say it, okay? We were the gophers. We went for everything. And so my my family, my mother, my father, and my grandmother were smokers. And so if the ashtray was too far, what did we do? Okay, we had to carry the, the cigarette butt to the ashtray. Or, and in our family, sometimes that means go throw this in the toilet. So my father would say, here, take this cigarette butt and go throw this in the toilet. So I think I was about four. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I was about either three or four. And so we would take the cigarette butt, hold it by the tip. They showed us how to do it. I know, I know, back in the day, you know, child endangerment wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> You know, we just, you know, it's just not like it is today. You know, it's a different world. But back in the day, you know, giving a child a lit cigarette wasn't considerate against the law. Okay. So <laughs> I took the cigarette butt and at first I would throw it in the toilet. And then <clears throat> one day out of habit of, of watching my mother, my father, and my grandmother smoke, I decided at either three or four to see what it was about. So I took a puff and I threw it in the toilet. And so every time I got the cigarette, I would go into the bathroom and close the door and take a puff and throw it in the toilet. Just like they told me to, except for I took my little puff. Then I think what happened, I got addicted. <laughs> At three or four, I got addicted to the cigarettes, uh, nicotine. And so therefore, when they said, throw this in the toilet, I raced to get it. And this particular day I raced to get it. And I think I wanted to hit it, you know, take my little puff. So I didn't take the time to secure the bathroom. I didn't make sure everybody was going out of the bathroom. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't make sure it was safe and secure. I, I I don't think I locked the door like I normally do. So I closed the door and I didn't turn around, but I, then the toilet kind of set up in a little nook. So you come through the door, the bath, the toilet was up in the nook and then the sink is right in front of you. So I just came in close the door and just hit the cigarette one time. And when I went to throw it, y'all know who was in there? Katie Jones. Katie Jones looked at me sitting on the toilet, and she said, give me that cigarette. 
Yeah, that's this stinking little heifer. And then she just, I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> I knew that it was a problem. <laughs> so I ran. I gave her the cigarette butt, and I ran, and I jumped behind my dad as if everything was okay. Well, when my grandmother entered into the room where everybody was watching TV, she was looking for me. She said, where is she? And I knew she was talking about me. And when she looked and saw, she just took a little switch. You know, we had switches back then. Can't do switches nowadays. She had a little switch, and she just began to whop my dad because I was over behind him. He took all my licks. But she began to whop him, really thinking she's whopping me, about smoking the cigarettes. So this is like one of my first real interactions that I can remember about my grandmother uh, when I was such a young age, between three or four years old. And... Uh, after that, the memories start to be more regular. I, I see her as always in the kitchen. She was always the one who seemed to be preparing our meals. She was the one who always seemed to be making sure that our clothes were washed or cleaned or that we were uh, taking care of our items that were purchased uh, for us to go to school with that they were taken care of properly. And so she is in my memory as the person who was training and developing me. She even gave us little tidbits like this. She says, you can be poor, but you don't have to be nasty. And that is a memory that she would set. It wasn't one time she would say that. And this was her thing about cleaning. Like every Saturday morning, everybody in the world knew that you had to get up on Saturday morning and the house had to be spotless. And Katie Jones had a procedure, a way. We had carpet in our house with no vacuum, but the carpet looked like we had a vacuum cleaner. Why? Because she taught us how to sweep the carpet. And I thought about that like down the road. I'm like, if I asked sometimes kids to sweep the floor, it's a problem. But this is the training and the development that she gave. She gave us what we had need of that took us to this day. My thought to all of what I'm talking about as far as Katie Jones and where is she? In me, Katie Jones lives. She taught us as grandchildren the nurturing in giving us the needs that we had. Uh, I can remember a couple of times her spanking me, but never with anger. I remember her chastening me but it was always for my good. Like looking back now, I don't remember her ever spanking or chastening me and with harmful words. Like she didn't, she didn't cuss us. You know, like I hear sometimes when people are disciplining their children, they cuss them. And I just don't recall her ever cussing me to get me to do something. She had a way of teaching and training and developing us that was with a touch of love that I cannot explain. She didn't have a lot. She didn't, as a matter of fact, I, my memories of her is that most of the time she was mostly in a, well, back then they call them a house dress with the pockets, you know, big mama, everybody had big mama with the, with the dress with the pockets. And in those pockets, I don't know, the world existed, did it not? I don't care what we had need of, it came out of them pockets. <laughs> Tissue, out of the pocket. Need a safety pin, out of the pocket. Need this, out of the pocket. See, like the combs and the brushes. Everything seemed to come out of them two pockets that was in the front of that dress. But she always seemed, I can't recall going to her with a need and the need wasn't met. Although I can look back now as a grown up, as an as a as an adult and mature woman, and see that she was trying to make things happen, as to what she was giving us, because it wasn't that we were uh, uh, by any means or any stretch of the imagination were we rich, by no means we were actually very very poor, and we actually had uh, our needs were um, uh, all that most of the time was met. We had very few wants that were ever met. Grandmother made sure that we had no need. She took in, um, I, and I wrote down some little uh, facts or things about Katie Jones that I wanted to emphasize because 
I think that today what we may be trying to abort or dismiss is the need of the village to raise children. Um, we, we sometimes think that the Katie Joneses are no longer needful and that the Katie Joneses are obsolete. These are the women in our lives that bring us the wisdom the education, the, the knowledge, the know-how, and not just bring it to teach us something to make their job easier. But I really believe she was teaching us with the intent that this will take you far, that this is what you're going to need to make it. I remember, I, I don't recall a time coming home and there was not a meal waiting for us after school. There was always she was always cooking dinner. Dinner was always about to be done when we got home from school. And so this is something that I also think is a missing element, is that person to come home to that you can, that the child can offload their day, get a meal, get a hug. And, 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 and I think that the Katie Joneses in today's society are being set aside. These grandmothers that have so much to offer sometimes are not giving the opportunity or, or not taking the opportunity because we have this world now where we feel like everybody takes care of their own business. You know, this is our family, this is our four no more. And so, you know, I, I take care of my kids and, and, and so it's not grandma's responsibility to take, it's not necessarily a responsibility as much it is, as it is a necessity because this is the thing about my mother. <clears throat> my mother and my grandmother's relationship was a need. My my mother was a young bride and therefore a young mother. And so she were ha she was having children in her late teens and early teens. Um and so right into her early 20s she was having babies. And so thinking about that, what does she know about raising kids? Katie Jones came at the time that my mother needed her the most. She needed someone to help finish raising her so that she could possibly try to raise these seven kids that she had uh, birthed uh, into this earth. As a matter of fact, I believe at the time that my grandmother came in 1965, my baby sister, Dina, uh, was the, uh, the one that was, that was birthed the earliest the latest child that was birthed was Dina and uh, Eric, the baby boy, which is the baby of the family. He had not been born yet, but my mother now with six babies in 1965 with the eldest being born in 1959, that means six years. She's got six babies. That's a lot for a young woman that started having children at 16. And so my grandmother came on the scene. I'm sure she recognized the struggle. I'm sure she recognized her need to, uh, to be helped that this young girl wet behind the ears. Um, don't know this from that, her head from her foot, pretty much now having six kids, she needs me. She needs me to help her. And so my mother, thank God that she allowed my grandmother, Katie Jones, to come in and help her. And I'm sure there were some times that she didn't want my grandmother to say some things. She felt like I'm the woman of this house and so on and so forth, which is sometimes the problem. Sometimes the younger women don't appreciate what Katie Joneses bring to the table. And although you may be the woman of your house, because this is your first rodeo, um, you need these Katie Joneses. You need these women of experience, these women. Uh, and not only this, but Katie Jones was not just a woman of experience, but she was a woman of experience with a love for the people that she was serving. It, how do you buy that? You, you can't buy that. I remember with her being in the home, there was such a peace in our home. And now I, just being transparent, my, my father was a street man. He, I mean, he just, okay. I, I would like to say it was different, but it wasn't. He just was 
he was a potty potty dude. You know, he was just you know, he he was the, the the OG what they call it, you know, OG. He just he was out there, and so kids wasn't necessarily his first priority. But his mother, my grandmother, Katie Jones, um, she made sure no matter what you do out there, these children are your priority. And so even if he didn't have the mind to do right by them, in her presence or during her time with us, he had to because she wasn't going to accept anything less. He had to make sure that he took care of his children. Um, my father... I thank God at the, by the time he had uh, uh, passed away, he had a different mindset. He was a different man. He was, uh, had confessed Christ and given his life to Christ, so he was a different man. But in his young years, he, he, he splurged those years. He, he didn't really take advantage of those years with his family. And so in those times, a lot of times um, after my grandmother passed away, we suffered our family suffered because my father didn't step up to the bat and take his rightful place in being a good father and being a good husband. And so a family man was not in, in his sights. But during 1965 to 1974, when Katie Jones <laughs> stepped on the scene, there was a peace in our home. And I always try to, I think this day, to this day, try to replicate, reproduce that piece. That's why in my house, I don't really like a lot of rising up, you know, a whole lot of, you know, drama and all that, that bothers me. And so I'd rather be at peace and make peace and have the house settled as opposed to having all things up and in, in a in an uproar, just not keep that going. And so my grandmother was that type. She settled the matter. Now she was four foot eleven, but she was no joke. Uh, she handled her business. I can re recall her uh, at a confrontation with my father, where uh, she had told him, you know, she was uh, big on um, etiquettes and doing things proper. And I remember, like, us girls, we, you know, there was no, you know, tomboys sitting up with your, with your dress on. We had to wear dresses. Well, you, you kept your legs, your knees together. That, that's what you did. Katie Jones didn't play that. And so you just, uh, she, she was quick to say, manish and fast. Don't be fast and don't be manish. So my father, this particular day, he was trying to be dapper, I think, and he had his shirt unbuttoned down here to his, uh, probably almost to his navel. And, and so back in the 70s, that was big back in the day. You know, you show your little super fly, <laughs> your little super fly or your, or what it was the other one, uh, not super fly, but what was the other one, the other cat? I just dated myself. Uh, shaft. Super fly and shaft time frame. You know, you, you wore your shirt open and, you know, you tried to be all cool. And so my grandmother told him to button his shirt. I'll go put a shirt on. And he just, and he was like, ah, I'm going to do it in a minute. Mama. I'm going to do it in a minute. And so he didn't have his shirt on. That's what it was. He didn't have his shirt on. And my grandmother said, well, go, well, uh, son, go put your shirt on. And uh, I'm, I'm going to do it in a minute. And so mind you, now, these, we in the house. He got people in our home. And uh, so he kept kept putting it off, talking, and you know our household was a house, you know, drinking happened. So they was having drinks and stuff. And so uh, my grandmother told him again, "Son, Edward, that she would call him. Edward, go put a shirt on. Oh, uh, I'm doing it a minute, Mama. I, I, I'm doing it a minute." So my grandmother left the room, left the area, and when she came back, now I'm remembering from a a mind uh, of a child, but. I remember her getting this ruler and she popped him in his chest with that ruler. Bat, 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 bat. I said, go put a shirt on. And my father, of course, was embarrassed in front of his friends because uh, he knew not to turn around and try to address that four foot 11 woman. He was embarrassed because she had basically spanked him with his seven children. 
in his household with his guests. But that was the kind of grandmother she was. That was the kind of mother she was. She basically was letting him know you were improper in front of your children, in front of your guests. You need to go put a shirt on. But he ignored her, which he should have remembered <laughs> that this is Katie Jones and I need to go put a shirt on. And then he wouldn't have got that little pop. Now, mind you, I'm sure nowadays that that might be a different little thing. But this is the mindset of this time that the the matriarch of the family had that type of authority to move the family in the direction it needed to go if there was some improper movement. And my father at that time, my grandmother felt standing there half naked because you're talking about in the 70s now, you're talking about a woman who is from an age where you didn't come indecent in front of people. So to show up with your only your pants on and no shirt, you were improper. So she, she addressed it. And so he was embarrassed. But the fact of the matter is she, this was the type of woman she was. She addressed things on the spot and she didn't bite that comp. That's what I was telling you about that confidence that she had early on. I don't know where it came from, but she was comfortable in it. She had no problem with making corrections or addressing things at the time. Now, one of the things that, 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 I'm going to share the memory of, and, and it's a part of who I am today, is uh, Katie Jones, out of everything that she contributed to our family, the biggest contribution was our introduction to God. Everything that I am today is wrapped around that thought. Um, my grandmother, like I said, had... I think a past where it may not have been the greatest. I don't have a lot of history on her in that area as to her rearing and as to her as a child. Um, I know that she was a midwife. Um, I know that she had birthed in the natural, a lot of people in her time, in her area, uh, their children into this earth. And so this was a part of who she was as well. Her introduction of God to us was that he was what we needed. Her introduction to, our introduction to God was prayer around the table, dining room table. Every Sunday morning we had to pray. And like I said, she wasn't an educated woman, but what she knew she stood on it. She didn't move from it. You couldn't convince her away from it. And although the prayer may to some people have been primitive and or repetitious, she believed it. And when she taught it to us, obviously we believed it because the question keeps coming up like, where's Katie Jones? Well, Katie Jones lives in me. Katie Jones is right here because what she imparted, what she gave to me, what she...